Welcome ESA Explores listeners. I'm your host for today, Laura Zermühlen, and in this series, we're meeting the members of ESA's Astronaut Reserve. During the first phase of their Astronaut Reserve training here at the European Astronaut Center in Cologne in Germany, they are mastering key skills in spacecraft systems, robotics, scuba diving, and survival training. Today's guest is Arnaud Prost from France, an aviation engineer whose expertise spans from high altitude flights to deep dives. Join us as he shares his exciting journey through ESA's Astronaut Reserve training. Hi Arnaud, welcome to the ESA Explores podcast. Hello, thank you very much for having me here. How are you doing today? Have you done a lot of training already? Yes, yes, quite a lot. It was a busy day as always here, but very interesting. A lot of, at, uh, at the same time, practical and theoretical lessons. So it was excellent and a bit of sport also. So uh, okay. great day. Great. And this is now in the middle of the trainings, but thinking back, what was the first thing that came to your mind when you were selected for the ESA astronaut class of 2022? Uh, the first thing I think is that I felt hugely privileged uh, to be part of the class. You know, it was at the end of a very long selection process. I had met a lot of interested people, passionate about space and being part of the of the few at the very end that will have a chance to 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 be part of uh, the future of space exploration with mm. ISA, I think is is just a great luck. So I felt very, very privileged. And now you're here in Cologne in Germany at the European Astronaut Center. How was your initial week or the first day when days when you came here? Yeah, it was like, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of discoveries. I was smiling without any specific reason just to be here around. Uh, it was great also to spend some more time with uh, the other trainees uh, mm -hmm. here, because even though we had been excited together, we did not have that many occasions to spend some time together. So it was great. And it was just like curiosity and, you know, and, and enthusiasm uh, yeah. every every single a class was was uh, a new discovery so it was uh, great and it still is and uh, the only the only thing is that it will come to an end at some point you have done something before right you've been to the pangea training yes what was this and how was it for you it was incredible experience yes i really enjoyed pangea uh, for several reasons uh, the first one is that uh, it was with an amazing crew. Uh, I, I did the Pangea training with Rosemary Coogan mm -hmm. uh, from, from ISA as well, uh, Norishige Kanai, uh, Nemo, uh, JAXA uh, astronaut, mm. and the whole team of trainers and instructors uh, from Pangea are just amazingly passionate and very into, into making this um, training as, as immersive as possible. So it was three weeks, uh, one week in Italy, uh, one week in Germany, one week in Lanzarote, um, Spain. So the, the, the idea was to uh, train on how to select correctly a sample when we will be exploring the Moon and Mars. So it was both extremely interesting from a scientific point of view, uh, how to you know, be able to pick up the right rock sample, but also from an operational point of view, because we were using some um, tools to analyze the sample. We were using communications with a, a, a control room. We had this interface with the scientists. So it was at the same time, extremely interesting from a science and operational point of view. Yeah. So you did some practical training before even starting the... <laughs> the yes. The... <laughs> yeah, I was lucky enough to, 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 to be part of this Pangea training. Yeah. And, and one take home message that I really liked is that, you know, in a team, uh, that is exploring, you need to have the right balance between some people who are more operational, that they want to advance as, as fast as possible to, mm. to be at the end of the traverse on time, etc. And you have some people more inclined to science, you know, they, they see an inter interesting rock and yeah. so they want to spend hours uh, around this rock looking, looking at it. And you have to find the right balance within yourself and within the team in order to be the most performant possible. And I found this extremely interesting mm. and, and very well um, adequate train on this uh, at Pangea. Yeah. And now here at EAC, what is the most interesting or exciting session or lesson for you right here? Mm -hmm. I have to say that since uh, I had the chance to work as a professional diver before, and I'm passionate about scuba diving. So the diving training here was really amazing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it was great. And to be in the pool for the first time, like it was really a dream within the dream for me to, to dive in the uh, NBF tank of the European National Center. Mm -hmm. uh, I had dreamt about this for, for quite some time and to be in the end within the pool, looking at the mock-up ar around the pool. Because it's like it's a 10 meter deep pool that we have here and they submerge modules of the space station, right? Exactly. So they, they, they submerge modules to train on how to move around the space stations. 
for this first training, we had our first certification uh, as, as a scuba guest diver. This allows us to dive here in the NBF, but also in the NBL in Houston. Mm -hmm. So that's the very first step into the uh, pathway to, to train underwater on, on, on spacewalks. And to that extent, it was really amazing. And I was very, very enthusiastic about it. Yeah, I can imagine. Anything you're looking forward to that is still upcoming? Uh, yes, so for more diving. <laughs> Nah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, I, of course, I will be very happy to continue this, this uh, journey of, of getting to have more qualifications yeah. in, in, in scuba diving here at the NBF. But I think another thing that is very uh, interesting and yet to come is the winter survival training. Mm -hmm. uh, this is something that I have done uh, in the military. And so I'm very looking forward to uh, spotting the differences on how we approach to those things. Do you know already if there are any differences in no, location not, or training or not really? No, not yeah. yet. And, and uh, funnily enough, it's in the same area because ah, okay. uh, within the French Air Force, we mm -hmm. do this winter survival training mm -hmm. in the Pyrenees as well. Oh wow. So yeah. yeah, I'm very curious about how it will be. And what I'm sure about, though, is that it will be a unique way for us as a group of trainee, uh, uh, as a team, to, to, to make some great memories yeah. and to bite, bind a bit more. Yeah. And this is, I think, essential. And one of the reasons why I'm so happy to, to be part of this training as well, because it's a unique opportunity to have some quality time together and to yeah. really be, become a team. Yeah. So now I'm a bit curious because you already did it, actually, or kind of a winter survival training. What was the, yeah, the, the best moment? back then was it something related to team bonding as well uh yes yeah i think that uh, in, w with hindsight it's really but you know even though it was really 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 cold and it <laughs> winter was survival. Uh, winter survival yeah. but it was long and the night was long and we were cold so you have to dig a hole in the snow and you put yourself in that hole and then you cover yourself you know with the parachute only yeah. and you only have your flight suit so it was like very very cold yeah and even this was this kind of uh, uncomfortable uh, situation to say the least mm -hmm. nobody complained yeah and uh, everybody was you know making the best effort to to be useful to the team and to mm -hmm. find some solutions to cope with this uncomfortable comfortable uh, situation and I think that this this is uh, a very good uh, mindset and this what this is the reason why it's a good memory in the end yeah and then also your background as a pilot and everything that you've done before do you think you have skills from that time that helped you here already during the training um, yeah, I think so. I think so. But and that's one thing that is very interesting uh, in this training because the five of us uh, for this first group, we, we come from different backgrounds, even, yeah. even though there are three pilots. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, we, we really noticed that all of us, we bring different things uh, to, to the team. And for example, so we had uh, um, a lesson about uh, human performance and behavior. So a mm -hmm. lot of big focus on human factors yeah. and, you know, accidents analysis. And this really is my job at the moment in my squadron. And all of us in aviation, we, we had already worked a lot on, on human factors. But we also had like a whole uh, less course on, on biology. Mm -hmm. and, and in this, uh, Sarah and Emily, they are very skillful. Like they know ev uh, everything about, about this, this field. And during some of the practical uh, sessions, I had some advice from Sarah mm -hmm. and also Emily. She was adding some, some things to the lesson that were super interesting. Yeah. So it was great. It was just good uh, mixture and, and everybody pitching in in, 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 the, in the training somehow. Yeah. Would you say this was the most challenging part than the unknown stuff that you didn't learn yet or mm -hmm. anything else? Yeah, H honestly, I did not uh, experience it as challenging because mm -hmm. I'm very curious. Uh, yeah. This this really, um, you know, any question that is uh, yet with a question mark for me is an invitation mm -hmm. to, to, to work and to understand. And uh, I had not uh, studied uh, biology for quite some time. So it was very interesting to, to learn all the, these new stuff. Yeah. And I was really amazed by the pedagogical efforts uh, from the training team here because they had, you know, in the classroom at the same time, some people with no experience at all in biology, mm. like, like the three, the three pilots. And they had two very skillful people with a lot of background in this field as well. But they managed to have the lesson made in a way that it was interesting for everybody. So uh, great experience. And even though it was not challenging, it was extremely interesting. And I really enjoyed that part as well. And was there a moment that you think is the most fun of the training? Yeah, we, we had this uh, particular exercise uh, when we had to do ourselves uh, some sort of a, a documentary about the training. It was ah. the objective was to put ourselves in the shoes of a, a journalist that would be interested into spaceflight. Yeah. So it was a change of perspective that was very interesting. 
but uh, it was just very fun also to you know be uh, our own subject and it was a, a good i would say uh, ground for some very nice jokes also about ourselves yeah. and i think that's something important and it's definitely the mindset of, of the group this group of training to be very serious in into what you're doing but not taking yourself too, too seriously. seriously yeah 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 so obviously you have a very great passion for space and space flight what is the most inspiring personal space discovery for you hmm. So when I arrived here at EAC, I had the very good surprise to find out that I had my name in an office at the very end of the corridor on the second floor. Mm. And then I walked all the way to, to, to my office and on the sides of the wall, there were some, some you know, um, mission patches mm -hmm. uh, of the former astronauts. And, you know, I took the time to look at all of them and it was amazing to, to find some names that I had met before and especially the one from the former French astronauts. Mm. And all of them, uh, they have inspired me quite a lot, uh, giving me some advice since I have been selected. And especially one of them who is in the office right in front of mine at the very end of the corridor, his name is Thomas Pesquet, and he gave me uh, ex extremely good advice so far. So I would like to thank him. So you met him before, actually? Yes, uh, I, it's very funny because I met him once. Um, I, I landed in another city and I was at the airport going out and then the customs, they, they arrested me asking some questions about my luggage. But mm -hmm. then I could not really understand what they were saying. It was in a different language. And uh, one person just, you know, walking by noticed that a French young guy was in trouble because he couldn't understand what was happening. And so he stopped by and he made the translation and he helped me going through the custom, basically. And this one person was Thomas Pesquet. No way. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have very, very good memory of this event because, you know, even though he's um, someone who has flown to space twice, who is uh, very famous in France, uh, he, he still took some of his time just to help one person ha out that he didn't know. So mm. I really enjoyed that part. And, in, you know, in some way it inspired me and he told me that no matter how serious your missions are, yeah. you, you can still be uh, very helpful and you should be helpful yeah. to other people you meet. Yeah, nice. That's actually also great advice for <laughs> everyday life. Yeah. Cool. Um, <coughs> to end on a lighter note, do you have any fun phrases or saying from another language? Because here at ESA, we have people from so many different cultures and nationalities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I picked up uh, a German word. Ah. Are, are you ready? I'm ready. Genau. <laughs> That's the one German word you need to survive over here. So I guess uh, yeah, applies in the right context. Uh, that, that's the one I master the most. Yeah. Do you know what it means and to use it in the right context? I, I would say it means okay, right? Like absolutely, it's a constant word, like yeah. saying being being positive, being supportive uh, with someone else. Is, is that right? Genau. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Well done. So talking about fun stories, do you have another favorite space related joke or anecdote maybe? Yes, I do have one anecdote that I really like. Um, so I am also, as as most of us, I would say a fan of, of Neil Armstrong. Mm. So he, for Apollo 11, they, ha they had a press conference, you know, before the mission. And then the journalists, they were asking, so what will you bring into space, you know, to please your family and your friends? And you had Buzz Aldrin saying that he would carry some jewelry to his wife. And then the journalist turned to, to Neil asking, so what would you carry to, to space? And he said, I would carry more fuel. Ah, and, to go further. Know, <laughs> to go a bit further away. Yeah. And, you know, I, I really like this, this mindset. Uh, it was half a joke and half serious, mm -hmm. I think. And I think it, it says a lot about the person. Yeah. And then for you, for the future, what would you wish for, for yourself? So for myself, I am, oh, I already have some very nice things uh, in the future because we will have two other sessions of uh, astronaut reserve training and I am very much looking forward um, to it. And then I would say, uh, as most of us, uh, I hope that they will have the chance to get into space at some point, whether it is uh, during a short duration mission as a member of, of the reserve, or if I have the opportunity to join the Corps at some point, um, but the most important things is to find some ways to contribute to, to space exploration and training is a very good way, in my opinion, getting ready mm. to, to, to be able to fly whenever the opportunity arises. But there are other ways and I'm very looking forward more possibilities to, to get involved into uh, the space exploration effort of the, of the European Space Agency. Yeah, so I guess you're right here at the right moment in the right time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes. Great. Thank you so much for yeah, joining us today. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.
It's been fantastic to hear about all these exciting steps our members of the Astronaut Reserve are taking. If you enjoyed this episode, don't forget to subscribe and share it with anyone curious about space. Be sure to follow us and our Astronaut Reserve members on social media and visit isa.int for all the latest on our missions, training and behind-the-scenes updates. Until next time, stay tuned and keep exploring with ESA Explores.